Welcome to the live stream. Uh, yeah, I'm going to be doing some Q&A. I got them over from uh, Instagram. So anyone here, you guys feel free to uh, leave any questions and I'll probably answer them. All right. First question. What is the perfect mini ramp height? Um, obviously, that's different for everyone. But for me, I'd say like four feet is perfect. You know, three, you're like kind of going slow. It's easy to learn like really hard tricks on a three foot, but you know, and on a five foot, the transition starts to just get a little too steep and you end up, um, it's kind of like when you pop your tricks, you fall off the ramp, like it pushes you off. Also, it's just pretty intimidating to learn tricks in that size. So I'd say like four feet is pretty perfect. All right. Okay, next question. We got, have you ever tried surfing? Um, never, I mean, I tried one time and I paddled out, tried to stand up on the wave, couldn't do it. But um, yeah, other than that, never surf, but I'm heading to Puerto Rico on Saturday. So maybe I'll surf there, who knows? If you guys have any questions, leave them. I don't know if you are and they're not coming up. Let me see. Oh, there we go. All right, cool. All right, what up, Steve Blue? Okay, next question, what do we got here? Why don't you make videos more often? Uh, that's a good question. I work, so it's kind of hard to get out and you know make videos, especially now in the winter, you got like snow. Sometimes it's like super windy or sometimes you just don't have an idea, you're just like not psyched. I don't wanna just make like any old video, so. Um, should be making a lot more now with this series where I'm going to every country, but we'll see. Come to New Zealand. Honestly, New Zealand, Australia, one of the top countries I've wanted to travel to my whole life. So once the board is open, definitely heading there. Let's see. Still in Mexico. No, I'm back in New York right now. We got like two feet of snow going on. So, um, not a good look for skating, but heading to Puerto Rico in I mean, three days on Saturday. So that should be fun. We got hi from Mexico. What up, Kevo Thrasher? Let me see in the uh, what questions we got here. Yeah, Canada, I can imagine, is probably even worse than here. It's probably much, much colder. All right, Indy or Thunder? Um, so I've only ridden Thunder one time. It was my last setup and they were really good, but honestly, I didn't feel too much of a difference between the Thunder and the uh, Indies. So I just got a new board set up. I'm gonna go over it in a little bit, but yeah, switch back to the Indies. So I guess Indies would be the answer then. Mob or Jess up? Um, I like Jessup personally. I don't like a super, super grippy board. I never really liked that feeling. So, um, yeah, I go Jessup. What else? Any advice from my friend that keeps snapping his boards? Yeah, land on the bolts. <laughs> Other than that, um, I think that like VX deck, I'm not sure what company makes that, but that thing um, I heard like doesn't really break that much. There's a few like, decks like that out there but i never really liked those like wasn't too into it what size wheels do i ride i ride normally 52 millimeter almost every board um the board i'm about to set up i got 54s so that's gonna be more of like a vert board but normally i'd say 52 that's like good size to flip your board Russell Sprout says, loving the travels. Thanks, man. I'm psyched. We got steep or mellow concave. Um, never really thought about it like too much. Honestly, my whole life, I would just skate whatever was given to me. Um, now I pay a little bit more attention. I would say probably more on the, the mellow side. I think it helps me flip my board a little easier, but I really don't know too much about it. Um, let's see what we got here.
Paul Ramirez says, what up, Chad? I've been teaching my son to skate. Nice. Hell yeah. That, that must be the best feeling in the world to like be able to skate with your son, like watch him learn tricks. Gotta love that. Any ideas for a DIY skate park? Um, what do you mean? Like obstacles to build or like how to build it? I'm not sure exactly what you mean by that. Uh, Barcelona is definitely on the list. That's like a lifetime dream um, spot. Like everyone wants to go skate Barcelona. So that's definitely up there. What I have planned right now is I'm going to Puerto Rico for a week. Probably just make a couple of videos there. Even though it's not like a, a country technically. A lot of you guys voted for it in that poll I did. And so I was like, yeah, whatever. I'm just going to try it. So heading to Puerto Rico. Then when I get back, I'm booking a trip to... Uh, Central America and haven't told anyone this yet. So going to Panama, flying into Panama, and then I'm going to hit like seven countries back to back to back and end in Belize, I believe. And then I don't know, I should take like a month or two. I'll probably be doing like a video every day or every other day. I'm not really sure, but that's the plan right now. It could change. And we got a super chat, Calvez Richard. Yo, Chad, please come in France. I'll always have a room set for you, plus a mini ramp in the garage. Damn, that's pretty tempting. France, I, but the weather's probably like pretty rainy and cold there now, right? I'm not really sure, but yeah, France is definitely on the list. Might have to make that happen this year. Um, California parks. Um... I don't really plan on going to California. Maybe if there's like a, a reason that brings me there, but I'm just going to be focusing on hitting every country. So probably going to stick with that. It's a big enough task. Um, let's see. Favorite board size. Probably say 8.2, something like that. That's been like the sweet spot for me recently. Um, anything bigger. I'll use for like more control, more stabilization. Like if I'm going faster or skating like a vert ramp, maybe I'll go up to like an eight, five, something like that. Um, yeah, I really won't go lower than like an eight might be the lowest I would go, but yeah, my first board was a 7.4. I believe I was like normal back in the day. It's funny. Let's see what we got. Let me see. Find the question here. Matt Dahlberg, what up? Oh, yeah. Thanks for stopping in, Matt. Let's see. Favorite trick at the moment? It's always a feeble grind. Honestly, I like doing some tricks for just feeble and then maybe a backsmith. But you just can't beat a feeble grind. Um, do you think it's more important to learn flat ground first or transition? It's a good question. Um... I think, honestly, it's better to learn mini ramp first because, like, if I was starting someone out from scratch, like, completely, I would want them to start, like, feeling good and, like, learning things even if they're, like, like a kick turn. It's, like, rewarding, you know, so it gets you psyched and wants you, like, makes you want to keep skating, you know, and then it might be hard to learn an ollie at first. You got to try, like, hundreds of times and, you know, mini ramp, you can tend to learn it a little bit quicker. Like, you just got to learn the pump. And the tricks tend to come a little easier for the most part. So, and then once you start feeling comfortable, then you can learn like all the tricks. But really, there's no way. Just as long as you spend time on the board, you're going to keep learning. Let me see what we got in the chat. Um, need to see some fishing skills on this trip. Miss the Tanner Mini. Can't wait to rip it up with you soon. What up, CJ Grasso? I'm thinking about starting another channel in the summer of just fishing videos, but I don't know. Brett Conti, what up? My cousin Brett popped into the chat. What's going on, Brett? Hell yeah. Any tips for learning stair sets or drops? I'd say work your way up. Start from a curb, two stair, three stair, and... Something I didn't do when I was younger was I didn't get my tricks like really consistent. I would just like, oh, I want to film a nollie heel off an eight. And then I would just beat myself up over and over trying to land it. So I would say don't do that. 
and learn like not only heels on flat, get them really good, really consistent, and then work your way up. Keep doing them consistent on small stuff. And then, you know, once you get, and do it going fast too, because sometimes if you don't skate fast, you think you have nollie heels perfect. And then when you get to the set, you have to go a lot faster to clear it. And then your nollie heels like not the same. So that's something I would work on if you want to get good at that. M says, hi from Belgium. Skateboard advice for your younger self. Uh, that was from Prototype 04. Let's see. Advice to my younger self. I said no to a lot of opportunities when I was younger because the people around me and like New York, the vibe, always thought everything was corny or selling out. And if I would have just kept doing things and like meeting people and like just doing whatever, I probably would have been able to like do something with it. But yeah, I constantly like thought things were cheesy or selling out. So I like wouldn't take opportunities. So I would say, yeah, just, you know, make sure you have good motives, you know, just try to learn and enjoy skateboarding as best as you can. And whatever comes your way, you know, try it out, see if it works, see how you feel about it. All right. Mucho Lucho should go fast in general. Completely agree. Completely agree with that statement. Let's see. David says, Mastic Sesh soon with Roy. Definitely got to make it back out to Mastic. Probably not soon, though, because we got like, I don't know, what? Like six inches of snow on the ground right now. Um, let's see. Costa Rica next. Um, that was from Clark Scott. So I'm going to be heading to Costa Rica, but I'm flying into Panama. And then I'm going to be hitting like seven different countries, I think it is, in one trip. Take me like a month or two. So, um, yeah, I think Costa Rica would be like the second country I hit on that trip. But yeah, if you guys want to help support the trip, I just started the Patreon. So it's just Patreon slash Chad Caruso. I'm going to show you guys like behind the scenes when I'm on my trip and going to be doing like Trick tips only on that Patreon and live Q and A's at the mini ramp, answering any questions you guys have. So if you guys want to support, it'd be huge because this trip to every country in the world is going to get pretty expensive soon. Uh, let's see. How do you think growing up uh, skating the East Coast affected your skating? I would say growing up in New York specifically, um, you're just around like a lot more people, a lot more competition. So the level I think in general here is like a lot higher than maybe anywhere in the world or like California, like certain big cities where there's so many people, it makes you get better at skating because like everyone's pushing their limits and you know, you're seeing more people. So obviously that's not always true, but that's from what I've seen. So I think it helped me just keep up with like the norm, like what was going on before me and, and during when I was growing up. Um, yeah. Uh, oh, also I could skate like the crustiest stuff and enjoy it. California tends to be a little more uh, smooth. Things are like pretty smooth out there. The concrete here gets like destroyed from the weather and uh, like the snow plows, things like that. So. I'd say the grit. All right, let me see what we got in here. Another super chat. Brussels sprout hooking it up with five bucks towards my travels. Thank you, man. Appreciate that. Let me see. Marcus L. Sorry for the spam. Love to see you. When is your birthday? My birthday is uh, February 25th. So if it all goes according to plans, I'll be in... Um, Starting that Central American tour around that time. Let's see, what do we got? My knees hurt, says, three back surgeries means I can't skate ever again. With no skating, I don't have much of a reason to get out of bed anymore. Yeah, it's got to be tough, man. Three back surgeries. I wonder if they're all from skating or not, but... um. 
you know, maybe you can um, just stay like really mellow. I don't know if you were pushing yourself like really hard, but just like cruising on the ramp, kind of kick turns and still getting that joy and getting out, hanging out with friends. Or, you know, sometimes you just got to move on from something and accept it and um, maybe start another hobby, start a board company where you can help younger kids like maybe get into skating and still have that same kind of like psych or reward towards something. But yeah, the bed probably not going to make you feel good in the long run. But let's see. Tomi, Tomi Shiriyama says, where's Sasa? Sasa is... Um, I think he just moved upstate, but he's been laying low for a while, man. I try to get him to come out skating. It's tough. It's tough. How long have I been skating? Uh, I've been skating for... I don't know, like, the exact year I started, but I feel like it's, like, 20 years now. I probably started in... Yeah. I was, like, 13, 14, something like that. So, close to 20 years. See this chat. And Voss said, I never thought you'd make all 50 states. You gave that gave you a ton of street cred for this trip. Thanks, man. Yeah, I mean, this one's not the same, you know. That that was fun and I really enjoyed that challenge and like just that was just an incredible experience. But I thought about doing a new country every day at first, but I just didn't want to do that. I wanted to like you know, make cooler videos about, you know, like meeting the people around and, um, yeah, like really experience the place a little bit more. So thank you, man. Um, let me check this chat. You ever been out to Buffalo, New York? Um, I've been to Buffalo once. I think there was an indoor skate park I went to for like an old S demo. Uh, I can't even remember it though. I'm pretty sure that was in Buffalo. Yeah. Um, have you ever considered becoming a pirate? Oh yeah. I've spent a lot of time thinking about that. One day, maybe. Once I'm done with skating, I'll probably work on the pirate thing, but for now, I'll probably just keep skating. Um... iPhone app to edit skate videos, question mark. Um, I use iMovie. I don't use anything fancy, just iMovie. I've been using iMovie since I started my channel. So every single video has been filmed, edited, thumbnails, uploaded. Just every single thing has been done on my phone. So, What, Sal Santiago popping in. Says, why is Nally back tell your favorite trick? I'm going to have to go with because it's easy. Because I can land it every try, so it just feels good. And it just works. Um, let's see. Hmm. Let me get a good question up here. All right. Uh, bro, I got size 11 feet. What deck should I get? Uh, size 11, I don't know, I'd probably be good with like an 8.5, 8.3, something like that. Depends how technical you are. If you're not, if you're flipping your board, maybe get like an 8.2, you know, 8.3. And yeah, if you're just mainly skating transition, maybe get an 8.5, something like that. Um, let's see. Kyle Anderson asks what I had for breakfast. Um, I usually just eat like an avocado with salt. That's usually good. Gets me going, fills me up, but it's like light still. Um, or I'll just skip breakfast and start the day and then eat lunch. Um, all right. Sir Fire John says, what board width do you typically use for transition? So the board I've always ridden is 8.2. Um, but I just got this board right here and this is going to be, this Chapman board is a uh, 8.5 and got, um, 149 Indies to go with it. So this is going to be like the biggest board I've ever skated really. Um, 
and I'm going to use it for everything. Like now I got it for transition and to skate some vert, but you know, I'm going to, I'm going on a trip with it and I don't have a backup. So that's going to be like my everything board. So we'll see, see how it works out. All right. Louis Mascola says, what country am I in? I am in United States and I'll be in the United States on Saturday again, but in Puerto Rico. Let me see some good cues. Gonna keep your loose trucks on vert, Neil Hester. Uh, I don't know. Um, probably go like more medium to loose. I like that little bit of looseness, but something I've been noticing like on my trip, I'm skating these sometimes big parks and you know, you lose your speed, like your legs buckle and stuff when you you skate looser trucks, so I'm pretty sure I'm gonna tighten them a little bit, but I don't know. I just have to see. I'm gonna bring a tool and just kind of play it by ear. Um, let's see. Head stopper it is. Oh, head shopper it is. Says, what do you think about stationary skating, like Jamie Griffin? It's all I do, as I don't have a skate park in my own town. I think it's cool, man. Like, any way you can skate is cool. And have fun doing it. Um, yeah, like, he loved it so much. That kid, Jamie Griffin, he does it all the time and, like, mastered it. And now people love it. So, yeah, I think if you do anything, like, just for a long time, I don't know. Just be into it. That's it. Just get If you're psyched on it, it's good. Um, do I use CBD? I have never used CBD. I've gotten offers for like people to sponsor the video for CBD and I don't know. I like, I just never tried it, but maybe I should one day. I've, I've heard it was good, but not really sure. Drugs are bad. I agree. I don't take anything. I'm completely straight edge. That's why the CBD is like, it's legal and it's not a drug, but I still feel like it is a little bit. So I don't know. I just kind of stay away from it. Um, let's see why don't I skate LES skate park um, I live in Long Island so I'm just it's like kind of a hike and it gets like pretty crowded during the day so to go there and like make a video like not ideal you have to go like really early in the morning and yeah i mean i go there occasionally basically whenever i go to the city we end up popping in there but will there be a tanner jam 2021 that's a good question uh that depends on covid really because that's what kind of you know it's like yeah i'm not sure if they're going to be holding the festival or not but if we can i'm going to try my best to do it Um, let me see what we got here. CBD definitely helps. Okay, I'm gonna have to try it then. Um, let's see what we got. All right, I'm gonna hit back to the, uh, the list I got from Instagram over here. Um, when are you going to learn backside airs? So that's basically why I got this 8.5 big board. Cause I'm like, I'm ready to learn backside airs. I saw someone doing it on my last trip in Mexico and I was like, I gotta do it. I gotta learn it. It's been like my dream to learn that trick, be able to just go back and forth. So yeah, definitely going down soon. All right. Calvez Richard, holding it down with the super chat. Appreciate you. He said, do you consider wearing a helmet and being a part of Pulos Helmet Gang? Shout out to George Pulos. He's the man. But uh, I don't know. I just grew up skating for so long with no helmet. And I've actually never hit my head skating, knock on wood, uh, in 20 years. That's not to say it can't happen. And it's there to prevent like that one time when you're not ready, you know, but, um, 
Yeah, I have nothing against wearing a helmet. I'll wear it when I skate vert. But other than that, I really don't see the use for it. Like, I mean, I see the use for it. But when I'm filming out on the streets and things like that, just uh, I feel pretty comfortable. I'm not, like, pushing my limits where I feel like I'm going to hurt myself. So on vert, definitely wearing one. All right. When can we expect a back five? Uh, we'll, we'll stick with the backside airs first, and then, and then I'll see. I'm not really sure about that one, but you know it's coming. You know if I get uh, the backside air, I'm definitely going to try that. Chad, love your mini ramp tutorials for the basic uh, inter... What's it? 10 easy, intermediate, and advanced uh, tutorials. Can you continue with some more? So yeah, I did one, um, what was it? Like five more advanced tricks recently. And I'm just moving basically all the tutorials over to Patreon. I'm going to be doing like in-depth tutorials that you guys get to vote on. And, you know, answering questions, live trick tips. Like, so all the tutorial stuff basically is going to go there. And then occasionally in between my travels, I'll upload like, you know, a tutorial of some type. Let's see. You should link up with Wally Bin so he can help you with the backside air. So you filmed him in Mexico. That's what kind of got me psyched to do it, honestly. And then he did give me some tips, so I'm gonna try those. Um How did you learn to skate mini ramp in your switch stance? Um when I started skating, I thought it was the coolest thing ever to, like, have people not know if you were regular or goofy. So I just tried to skate, like, that way. I just would, like, open my shoulders up and kind of try to make it look the same way. Because sometimes you can tell if it's switch. So that was just so cool to me. So I learned everything, regular and switched. And whenever I would teach people, I'd tell them to learn it the same way and to, to push with both feet. Just so you're, like, kind of ambidextrous about it. How stressful was it to do all the states? Trash Family TV says. Um, honestly, it wasn't stressful. Like, I felt so relaxed and, like, that was what I was meant to do. I was just, um, I guess you'd say, like, in the zone, you know? Um, at first, it was stressful. Like, the first, I'd say first week, right? Because I had no idea what I was doing. I had to figure out, like, the thumbnails and the editing the videos like that night there was really no way to prepare for it i had to like film the video and then be like okay now what so once i got my system down like seven days in i was back in new york met up with my cousin and then i kind of felt like normal again and then that was just a daily routine just like just kept firing it off so yeah it really wasn't stressful to be honest um here we go. Oh, we got a super chat. Uh, C. Adam says, do a kickflip on one of those decks in the background on the carpet. First try for 20 bucks. <laughs> All right, I'm going to have to try one off. I think one of them has grip on it, too. All right. He definitely he knows I'm bad at kickflips. That's why he's offering it. All right, hold on. Let me see if you guys can see over here. All right, I'm definitely not gonna land this. Come on. All right, one more, one more, one more try. <laughs> All right. Coming back to that one. <laughs> I haven't done a stationary kickflip on a blank deck in so long. All right. I think we got another super chat too. Um, Higgs Monaghan says, much love from the UK. I am currently recovering from a wrist injury, so can't skate for now. I'm watching your tutorials to get inspired for new tricks to try when I'm healed up. Keep it up. Higgs, you're the man. Thank you. Appreciate that. And um, yeah, I don't know if you were here before, but I'm starting. I just started the Patreon. I'm going to be doing more in-depth tutorials over there. Um, 
like three tries at the kickflip got me out of the breath. Uh, we've been doing more in-depth tutorials, polling you guys and finding out like what tricks you want to learn and picking from them. So, uh, yeah, appreciate the uh, super chat. Thank you. Elias de Almeida, I think that's how you say it. Appreciate you sharing your journey and recovery in some of your previous videos. I've struggled with addiction too. Love the inspiration. Thanks, man. Yeah, I don't know. One day that just kind of like came over me. Like the story was just like fresh in my head. And I just kind of put the camera down and like 13 minutes straight just basically told my whole sobriety story. Um, I'll probably do more videos like that in the future. Just because uh, I've gotten a lot of good feedback from everyone about that. So here we go. All right. <laughs> See, Adam says that deserves a five spot. Thanks for trying. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah, my kickflips are shoddy, so uh, I'm like out of breath already from three three attempts. Sir Fire John says, "What do you do for work?" Um, for work, I run a food truck, but not in the winter. So this place, Swall Taco, um, has a food truck. So I make tacos, run the whole thing, like host events, stuff like that. And then uh, I manage at the restaurant and I'm also a server there. And then I just make YouTube videos. And YouTube's not like, not making that much money from YouTube at all. You know, I don't even, I try not to even think about it. Like it's an income cause it's so far away from being one. So um, maybe that'll change with the Patreon, but that's my hope because it's gonna get pretty expensive to go to every single country. Like the ones I'm going to now in Central America, it's not that expensive. You know, you could fly there for like 300 bucks, something like that. But um, like Africa and places like that, it's like a thousand, two thousand. Australia is like two thousand. So it's it pretty expensive. So we'll see what happens. But I I'm making it happen either way. So Let's see what we got. When will Patreon be available? Trevi Chase, Trevi Chase says, um, the Patreon's up. I just lost, I just launched it last night on Instagram. And uh, so yeah, it's up. It's just Patreon slash, patreon.com slash Chad Caruso. Um, <laughs> Metal Beer Solid says, skating in Dubai would bankrupt all of us. Yeah, probably. Um, C. Adams coming through with the, the questions. He said, have you ever hooked up with a girl on one of your state trips? Answer honestly for 10 bucks. So on the 50 States Challenge, I had a girlfriend and she stayed with me the whole time. So um, I'm, I'm a loyal guy. So I had like no desire. Plus, I was just so dead focused on the challenge that. That was like the last thing from my mind, honestly. Um, and even not, like, I'm just a faithful guy. Like, I have no desire to do that. So if I was single, maybe that'd be a different story. All right, let me see. We got a super chat up here. Darkwing Duck. No question. Just hooked it up with five bucks. Thank you, man. Appreciate you. Favorites. What are your favorite skate shoes ever? From uh, Bossman's Karim. Karim. Uh, these guys right here. The uh, Busenitz Volk. These are the ones. I recently tried the Volk 2s. And those are incredible too. I might even like them more than, than the original. So. Um, yeah. Busenitz Volk 2. Alright. Let me look through these questions. Hold on. It looks weird about that deck. OCD right there. Got to keep it nice and looking normal. All right, we got a couple super chats. Or just one, huh? <laughs> Says, C. Adams, liar. You smashed in Nebraska. I know the girl and she told me you cried afterwards. Damn it, you caught me, man. Shit. <laughs> All right. Uh, here we go. Uh, 
All right, I've got a super chat from Nargoyles. Great name. How do you get through your plateaus? Um, I'm not sure exactly what you mean by like plateaus in progressing in skating or in life making YouTube videos or I'm not really sure exactly. But um, let's see. Well, a plateau in skating I'll start with. Um, and skating, okay. Uh, so yeah, skating, that's a good question. Um, yeah, you can't always be expecting to progress, like like noticeably, you know? it's You have to just accept that it comes in like peaks and valleys. And then sometimes if you learn a trick, like, you know, a three flip or a laser flip and you get it down, like you figure out the trick to it, finally then the next two weeks becomes you learning all these variations of it like very easily you know same thing like a backsmith or something then it just comes like very natural after that so yeah i just try to um honestly yeah just keep just keep doing it that's it as long as you keep doing it you're gonna keep progressing but uh gotta put in the hour sometimes people expect to progress but they're not really, really focusing on like, I'm learning this trick. I'm putting in the hours. And sometimes you like go to the park. You're just skating around doing what you can do already. So you kind of need to be able to focus on the, on like certain tricks. All right. Oh shit. We got Danny Torres in the chat. What up? What's going on? Um... Any more super chats? Nope. All right. Let me see what we got. What age did I start skating? Um, I think that was about, I was kind of late. I think like 14, maybe 13. Some kid, um, the kid from high school, I can't, oh no, I'm high school, middle school. He just came over with a board one day and I was just like so psyched on it. And I think it was because my brother used to skate. And when I was like three years old, five years old, he would launch me down my cousin's driveway, upstate New York, like this huge pitch and I go like flying into the woods. So I probably had that like, you know, that experience, that like thrill seeking, uh, amazing experience of skateboarding when I was a kid that. Once I got older and saw it, that's when I started. But kind of late, though, you know, people that are, like, really good usually start, like, really young. And it's just, like, so burned into their brain by the time they're old that they could do it, like, no problem. So let's see. How did – Ashley says, how did you practice riding switch? Um, in the beginning, any trick I learned regular, I try to learn switch, too, and, like, mirror it. Um also, push around everywhere, switch. You'll thank yourself later. It's like really hard and you'll be off balance. And if you're skating around the city, you won't be able to like keep up with your friends. But that's what like will help you burn in those muscles and make it like second nature. All right. Will you meet up with Ben DeGrosse in Canada? Um... Ben reached out to me a while ago. We were going to do a video, actually, and uh, we never got around to it. But, yeah, I'll definitely meet up with Ben. That's, like, I think he's in Vancouver, though, so I got to see because I'm, I'm not sure, but I feel like that's on the other side of the states and north. So um, it might be too far, but maybe I'll plan a trip there. Who knows? Um... Let's see. Have you tried jumping rope as a warm up? Um, let's see. I've never done the jumping rope, but I'll do like these knee things. I'll try to show you right now. Probably gonna fall. Or I'll like bring my knee up to my chest like that. Yeah, you know, I'll just keep doing that. And then maybe like if there's something around like a ramp, I'll do a box jump and jump up onto it. But that's really it. Sander Van Der Sluis says, my beer is more white than yours. 
Uh, I got that salt and pepper beard, but yours must be looking pretty nice, though. All right. Got a super chat. Thanks for holding it down. Oh, shh. All right. Uh, if you could pick one major board company as a sponsor, which one would you pick? Greetings from the Netherlands. Um, that's, uh, I don't even know, man. Yeah, I really, like, couldn't even... I'm not too, like, psyched on any company that, like, I'm, like, so dying to get on. But, uh, yeah. I honestly can't even think of one. Maybe, like, real or something like that. But, yeah, I don't know. If you said shoes, I'd probably pick Adidas. But in board, I have nothing, like, really uh, pulling me the same way. C. Adams. Hold me down with the super chats. Appreciate you, man. Going to send you a new sun faded black t shirt. <laughs> Thanks. You know what's, uh, what's terrible is when I flew back home from Mexico, um, I had my my wardrobe, you know, it's all black, right? I had these eight black pocket tees from Dickies and eight black pants. Basically, that's my whole wardrobe. And they never returned my bag and my board, just got lost. Sent to another country, tried to find you for weeks, nothing. So I got to like, yeah, re-up all my black tees. There we go. What we got? What is your preferred ramp height? I would say, um, let me see, probably four feet, right? I said this earlier, but uh, three feet, sometimes you lose your speed or you're kind of, for me, it's like kind of too slow. It's fun. It's fun to learn like really technical tricks on too. And, but, and then five feet, when I do those technical tricks, if it's steep, it's a kind of steep, it pushes you off the ramp and it makes it much harder to do. So I'd say like four foot is the sweet spot. Also, when you fall on a five or a six foot ramp, it's like, it could hurt. Wow. What up? You got George Poulos popping in the chat. How much money to fully blast a backside air out of the Chelsea Bowl? No warm-ups. <laughs> um, backside air is my dream trick, but I don't know that even if I willed it, I would be able to do it first try. Um, I don't know. Maybe 20 bucks. 20 bucks and I'll, I'll go for it first try. I'll stick it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, we got to meet up soon and skate, though, for sure. Um, Surfire John says, what are your goals career-wise? Um, let's see. To, my goals career-wise are just to make a living off of skating and help as many people as I can. That's really it. So I'm just going to keep doing that as much as I can. And then hopefully it works out. Not really planning on quitting anytime soon. So, um, Let's see. All right, C. Adams, my guy, the super chat. Honest question for you. I'm actually very good at skating. Could have gone pro. For some reason, I constantly find myself competing with other folks at the park. Do you share the same se sentiment? Good question. Um, I did when I was younger, right? Until I, I had my knee injury. Right, because then once I hurt my knee, and I was out for six months, and then right when I healed, I got hurt again in the same knee, tore my MCL, and then I just kind of like knocked the wind out of me, and I didn't skate that much. And then when I came back to it, you know, after like drinking and all that stuff, I was just older. I wasn't paying attention to skateboarding and what was cool, what was good, what was the norm. I was just so detached from it that when I came back, it was just like, I was like a little kid again. It was just so pure and I was just psyched to do it. So that's when it kind of changed for me, I think. Giovanni G D Giacomo says, what is the best type of wheels for doing transition? Um, Best wheels, obviously, Karma Wheelco, man. 54 millimeters, you got those on tranny, and you're good, you're set. If you're getting technical, I'd say 52. Andres 
Gayer, I don't know how to say that. Have your opinion on tacos changed in Mexico? Um, yeah, the tacos in Mexico are incredible. They don't even compare to here. And then, especially in New York, like Cali's like closer to Mexico and they got like much better tacos there. But yeah, New York's taco game, Mexican game is slacking. Seriously. Um, Danny Torres asks, Chatty, how much money to be my daddy? Um, I'd say to be chatty daddy, I'd say $20 super chat and call it a day. We got to skate soon, man. Um, let's see. BTTTF Bacon says, how do you bail on transition safely? Um, I think if the ramp is like five feet high, when you bail on a grind, you can kind of just forget about your legs and miss and then slide down the ramp like a slide. That works for me a lot, and I end up not getting hurt that way. Um, but, yeah, on like a forefoot, you can't really do that because it's so low and like kind of mellow. So the slide like doesn't really work. Um, yeah, I don't know. Just try to really – I work at everything systematically so I feel comfortable doing it. I break it down into small parts, and then I try – the harder thing so to make sure i won't slip out let's see no skate park tour with george it could be a series dude george hop on the trip come on man hit me up let's do it you want to do south america I'm hitting uh seven countries in central america probably in the next couple of weeks i'm gonna fly to um, Panama, and then I'm going to hit, you know, Costa Rica, Guatemala, all those countries, Salvador, and then end in Belize and then fly home. So probably like a month or two trip. Yeah. Spread that COVID. I love when people say those comments because, um, it literally makes no sense because I work at a taco restaurant. So I've been in the front lines of COVID in one of the busiest States for, the entire length of it so by leaving i'm almost like being exposed less you know and i also not breaking any rules just wear my mask following all the protocols and traveling where i'm allowed to so i appreciate your uh, negativity all right we got a super chat matt dahlberg what up man what was that first knee injury that needed surgery I had surgery in high school that forced me to quit skating. Just started back up on the other end of 30. And it's all, all good since everything hurts now. <laughs> yeah, man. After 30, it's like if I don't skate for a couple of days, just everything gets so sore. So um, my first injury was AC. I tore my ACL and PCL on my left knee, right? So... Just warming up at this spot in Brooklyn. I'm street skating. And I was going to ollie over a handrail into a bank that went like that. So I just ollied from the back and like rode onto it. And just dropped in like super mellow. And I ended up just getting wheel bite. It's on YouTube too. Uh, ended up getting wheel bite flipping forward. And then I was about to knock my teeth out on a telephone pole. So I like put my arm up. And my knee just went into the ground like this awkward angle to stop me. And yeah, that was how I heard it. And then I just thought it was like any other knee like bruise. So I waited two months. Um, no, two weeks. I waited two weeks. Swelling went down. And then I tried to kick flip. And then midair, just grabbed my knee like in so much pain. And I was like, all right, I can't skate. This thing's torn. So at that time, I didn't have health insurance. So I had to have insurance for a year to get surgery. So I skated on it for one year, entire year, just didn't flip my board. Um, and then I got the surgery. So that was definitely tough to overcome, man. But um, yeah, I'm psyched I did because I just love being out and skating so much right now. Let's see.
Jordan Brow says, appreciate your positivity, Chad. Thanks, man. Appreciate that. Um, let me see what we got here. Chad, what's your favorite number? Um, three. Hands down, number three. All right. Let's see. You guys got any cues for me? Do you have a framework slash process for learning new tricks on mini ramp? I'm a rookie and I've been trying simple frontside grinds on the coping, but kind of hard right now. Um, yeah, uh, the beginning is going to be the hardest. Once you get like the fundamentals down, things start to open up a lot faster. So the beginning is definitely going to be weird. I'd say, yeah, I work at everything systematically. Like I'll practice kick turn lower on the ramp and then on smaller ramps, work my way up and just kind of like build that momentum. And I, I found that that's the best way, not just jumping right into like a slash on a forefoot, but like working your way up to it. Gabe Sullivan says, tips to those of us who want to start your own channel. Um, let's see. Just do it, man. Just just do it. Um, I had used no social media. Like, I had a Facebook, but I quit it for like four years. No cell phone. Off the grid. So I knew nothing about all of this stuff. And when I got sober, I decided to just start a channel and I bought a phone that I couldn't afford. I was in debt like thousands of dollars and I leased an iPhone for $30 a month and I just started making videos with it and that kept me like out of trouble. And then it's like slowly just built, you know, and it was like so tough to learn how to edit and do social media and like, I was just so out of the loop, but let's see, you just put in the work and eventually You'll get it. Um, another common problem I hear is it feels awkward when you film yourself. That's not a you problem. Like everyone thinks it's just them. It's every person, you know, everyone has that feeling. And I just try to look at it as a learning process and like try to learn about myself. You know, you keep watching yourself over and over. You see your mannerisms and like the way you, you know, fumble on words or use the same words over and over. So it's good as a tool for me to learn about myself. Trevor E says, do you own Karma Wheels? I am the owner, yep. Um, it's been tough with COVID to print new wheels, so probably gonna have a new line this summer. And I have a new shirt coming out in like two weeks when I come back from Puerto Rico. So I'm really psyched on this shirt. Psyched to share with you guys. It's just like a one-off, not like a series or anything, but really good shirt. All right. Tony Perk says, how are you able to take so much time off of work to skate? All right, so um, my boss actually skates, right? He's from California, and he owns the taco restaurant, Swell Taco. So he skates... And the owner's just really cool. They're laid back and, you know, I'm a server. So people just pick up those shifts when I leave. So it's pretty easy. And yeah, everyone there's just really cool. They actually supported me when I left and threw like a 50 states uh, go away party to raise money. And um, yeah, so super grateful for them. But yeah, I could just like go away for a month or two and then come back. And then, um, yeah, so got lucky with that one. Let's see. Weird question. Were you in New York on 9-11? Um, I was. I was in school. I remember I was in like 7th or 8th grade tech class. And everyone just went home from school that day. It was like super weird. Kind of no one was really going on. But um, yeah, definitely was here for that. It was pretty gnarly. Um... Let me see what we got. You guys got any cues for me? 
Have you ever been to Denmark? No. So funny thing about this going to every country series is that I never left the country. Like I went to Mexico uh, on foot and Canada like really quickly on a little trip to Montreal. But basically I never left the country. And so this is like, I did all the 50 states and now it's just like, all right, every country. So should be fun. Um, all right. Tony Hawk, Hawk, Tony, <laughs> Tony Hawk. Nice. I tore, that's incredible. I tore my ACL. <laughs> I tore my ACL and meniscus in my left knee playing b-ball two years ago, and I'm back to skating now after my surgery. But that damn knee always hurts. Does knee pain ever go away in your experience? Um, yeah, I mean, I guess it's been a, a year and a half since you like fully healed, so it shouldn't really keep hurting. Um, mine throbs constantly, and I just deal with it. But I'm not sure if that's because of the injury I had after my knee surgery or from the surgery. I think it might have been rattled up after. But I do flip tricks for like 10 minutes and then my knee's throbbing. And sometimes it doesn't hurt while I'm skating. But once I stop or sit down or something, it'll like really kind of tighten up. But yeah, just deal with it. I don't take any pain medicine or anything like that either. All right, we got a super chat. Finlay Adams says, hey, Chad, love your 50 states, man. I just started skating nine months ago. If I land a tree flip down three stair, will you promise to come to Scotland? 100% I promise. Send it to me on Instagram. <laughs> um... Danny... Let's see. Danny Torres asks, when are you collaborating with Danny Torres? That's a good question. Um, let's see. Do you want to, uh, you feel like coming to um, Central America for like two months? Let's collab for like uh, 20 videos in a row. Hop on. <laughs> um, yeah, physical therapy is key. Um, 100%. A lot of the pain that you feel anywhere in your body usually comes from some other place connected to it. That's what I've learned, right? So if you have like lower back pain, a lot of the times it has to do with your core or like you use other muscles to compensate, right? And that's what really like the pain starts. So physical therapy and like training those muscles and getting everything strong for sure will help you. Wow, just got a $25 super chat from Rigatoni88. No question, but thank you, man. Really appreciate that. Helping me with my travels to every country. <laughs> All right. Sir Fire John says, been here since 2K subs. Appreciate that, man. Wow, 2K. I don't even remember what I was doing then. Maybe I was still like, I think it was the new trick every day challenge where I learned I had like, I was working like six days a week and I learned a new trick like every single day for 30 days. So if you guys don't know, that's where like the 50 states started was that series. And once I did that, like a year later, I was like, how could I top that series? And then the 50 states came in. Um... Let's see. Have you had any contact with Johnny Geiger? Um, never. No, never. Uh, never talked to him. But I'd be down to skate. But uh, yeah, we'll see. Let me see what we got. I can't believe this is my only second live stream. I should definitely have been doing this more often. Um, Chad, if you make t-shirts, I'll cop. Constant Dread. I got t-shirts coming uh, in like a week or two. I'm so psyched on this graphic. It's an idea that 
I've never seen anyone do, but it just like makes so much sense. So yeah, it's like to share it with you guys. Um, hi, Chad, how did you build your channel? Any tips on getting a wider audience? Um, honestly, I don't really think I have a wider audience because I never like did the things that it takes to get a wide audience. I, I focus basically straight on skateboarding. Um, so yeah, um, some of the things I do is I try not to waste anyone's time. I cut out anything that I think is like just slow or like cut, you know, just wasting time. Um, I try to make it as valuable as I can. So when I started, I was like, all right, I'm good at mini ramp skating. I should probably share that information with everyone. So find something you love, something you're good at, share it with people and help be consistent do it over and over and over don't focus on the results focus on the process and just keep doing it um and yeah you do all that you should be good um let's see what is the next country on my list so I'm going to Puerto Rico, which isn't another country. It's America, but a lot of you guys voted for it. So I'm going to hop over there. Um, yeah, skate for like a couple of days, hang out, relax. And then right shortly after that, I'm going to book a trip to Central America. It's going to be seven countries, probably like a month or two long, just traveling. And yeah, I'll probably fly into Panama. And then just hit every country until I get to Belize. I think there's like seven there. And then fly home. So that's the plan. Um, yeah, definitely going to be a wild trip. I have no idea what to expect, how the borders are. People are going to let me travel. I think it should be good, but we'll see. Um, Guatemala, I'm coming. That's like, I think that's the second cut. No. Second or third country? It's definitely in there, for sure. Hit me up. Any of you guys in any of these countries, if you happen to be watching, send me a message on Instagram and I'll meet up. You know, or we could try or whatever. Or you could tell me some cool spots in the area, but I appreciate when all you guys reach out over there. Um, Let's see. Mm -mm. You guys got, oh, when's that full length video coming out? Um, got a full length video with Danny Torres, George Poulos, Josh Katz, Ross Mayfield, and Tal Rodkey. Um, I didn't film like a full part. It was really filmed in like a couple of weekends, maybe like four or five weekends or something like that um but i'm pretty happy with my part and I'm, yeah should be out on pi day 3.14 so march 14th um that military dude sup chad what up darkwing duck says harder soft wheels i'm gonna go with uh hard always like hard wheels uh, to be able to like slide my wheels on the ramp is something I need to do for a lot of my tricks. So soft wheels tend to get too grippy for that. So usually always hard. This part was done in Mexico. No, um, I filmed and finished the video before Mexico. And then I went and skated film that, that series afterwards. I am planning to go to Brazil. Um, that might be next after Central America. I'm not really sure. Really just depends on like like COVID and if it's easy to travel there, if it's safe and stuff like that. Mm. Alright. First Snelling Spooky says, Would you ever consider doing a nine club interview? Um when I was doing my fifty states challenge, one of my good friends is friends with all those guys and he reached out. And heard like nothing back. So I think they, 
they, they want like more of a high tier and like in the core community type of a guest. Maybe in the future when they run out, they'll expand. But um, yeah, they, they like keep it really like, you know, I'd say core. That's their main like audience. So uh, yeah, I mean, I would do it. I'd do anything basically. All right. If you got the money, would you hit up Japan? Yeah, so that's basically what's stopping me from hitting a lot of these countries. Like, I might have went to Africa, hit a country in Africa or something for this trip. But the flights are just, I can't afford it. I'll be broke, like, um, before I even start. So, yeah, hopefully I can raise some money through the Patreon I just created, making more trick tips and behind the scenes for you guys. And, um, yeah, if not, I'll figure it out. I'm not... Like, not going to do it. So, I'll figure it out somehow. Um, that was something I wanted to ask. Do you know any of these pro most known skaters? Um, let's see. I can't even remember. Honestly, I don't even really think about it. But, um... I used to live in California for a bit, and during that time period, we were skating with a bunch of the guys, and, like, my friend Pat Rumney rode for Baker, and so, we like, we would just go out with him on all the filming missions and stuff like that, so, and, like, some of the parties at night, but, yeah, um, in California, it's a lot easier to meet people, like, pros and stuff. You'll see them at the parks and, like, everywhere. In New York, I basically didn't see any pros my whole life, so... That's another thing. It makes it harder because if you're, like, seeing these guys and skating with pros all the time, you're going to get better and try to get to that level because you have something to compare to. If you don't, it makes it harder. So, yeah. Um, let's see what we got. Yep. Zach Matthew, what Zach Matthews says above me, uh, do the Fancy Lab podcast. I'd be down. If anyone that reaches out, I'm down. Um, link your Patreon. I can't do it right now. I probably should have done that. Um, <laughs> yeah, pretty stupid. But um, let me see. Yeah, no idea how to do that. But it's just Patreon slash Chad Caruso. Um, it's on my Instagram right now. If you swipe up, it's just right there. And yeah, if you just search Patreon Chad Caruso, should come up. Be careful though. I think there's an imposter one from like Switzerland or something like that. So just make sure it's in English and it's mine. Um, let's see what we got. Uh, how long, when did I start skating? I think around like 13, 14. Um, how did you get in touch with Mowgli from Braille when he was in New York? I saw you in his video. So he's good friends with uh, my friend Danny Torres, who rides for my wheel company, Karma Wheel Co. And um, yeah, he was in town and just, we're all skating. We're filming for our full length video and he just came and met up and we showed him around. Which now actually Mowgli rides for Karma Wheel Co. too. Forgot to mention that. Um, Billy the Skater says, do you have a sponsor? I do. Um, sponsored by Dickies. Just flow though. Nothing crazy. I mean, it's kind of like bro flow. Because my friend's the rep. So um, Dickies takes care of me. Uh, Adidas just started hooking me up. I got my first box like last month. So, um, that's flow too. And then I ride fully for Chapman skateboards. Um, do you, oh, Matt Dahlberg holding it down with the link to the Patreon. Thank you, man. I appreciate that. Thank you. Um, do you have any sponsor me videos of you skating? Uh, 
I think it's online on my YouTube channel. I like have a video from back when I like close to when I first started the channel of me like watching my first sponsor me tape. Um, also, someone just sent me like one of my best video parts from when I was younger that was never posted online. I think I'm actually gonna post that on the Patreon. Um, and just like leave it there for you guys. So anyone wants to go check that out, um, Matt Dahlberg just posted the link to the patreon matt i'm gonna have to make you like a, a moderator or something on here let's see yep i think i just did it nice all right um can you try crux trucks yeah i'd be down to try them maybe i'll make a video on it um do you skate in dickie's eight seven four four pants Normally, I skate in, um, they're called WP, like work pant, WP006, and they just have a nice relaxed fit. They're not too tight, um, but I lost all of those when I lost my bag from Mexico, so right now, I'm, I'm wearing a bunch of uh, 874s, which are a little tighter, but they get the job done. All right. Let's see. If you could give yourself an advice to yourself when you started skating, what would it be and why? Um, I would say one thing was to learn my tricks right. Like do them the right way and get really, really good at them. Like super control of my ollies, um, learn how to tweak the kick flips and like really take my time. I was in kind of a rush to get good, so I didn't learn the techniques like really well, you know? So I would say it's good to build like a good base, you know, that, that you start from, and then it'll be a slower progression. But once you get to the part where you're like, gonna learn harder tricks, it'll be much easier and your skating will just look way better. <laughs> um, let's see. Hmm. What is your favorite skateboarding video? Baker 3 or Almost? I'm going to say Baker 3 because that was like, I was raised on that video. That was like, you know, that's what I watched before I went and skated. So definitely Baker 3. Okay. Uh, Zach Matthews in the chat, he says, uh, thank you for the super chat, by the way. He says, trick you've done that you're most proud of. Also, tell a Waterville Valley story, fellow ex-counselor here. All right, so, Waterville Valley, right? It was a skate camp in New Hampshire that I went away for three months from New York, just sent me up there, and then we stayed in a cabin with like eight, nine other skaters in the woods and a mountain. And that's where I really learned like a lot of transition, just stuck in a park in the woods for three months with other good tranny skaters and I'd see them doing tricks. And then like, that's when it really kind of changed for me. Um, but yeah, that camp was so much fun. Just like, that's when I really started to love like teaching people and making tutorials and things like that. Cause yeah. Um, and then, all right. So funny story is we were in that cabin, right? All the counselors blackout drunk. Someone came over with a tattoo gun and they bet me I wouldn't get a tattoo of the of the camp logo that was on the shirt on my chest. So ended up <laughs> getting the tattoo. Uh, it didn't look like that when I first got it, though. It was like just the outline. I got it shaded in later. But if you could see, I asked them to just modify. Oh, they, it's like the Led Zeppelin thing, but it has broken skateboards on the top. So, Yeah funny story oh yeah and then they also did this and i was like passed out drunk when they did this <laughs> says the worstest yeah funny times there man learned a lot at that camp all right super chat from tom martin appreciate you supporting thank you thanks for all the great videos i quit for 10 years and you were an inspiration for getting back into it 
That's awesome to hear, man. I love hearing about everyone getting like back into it and getting psyched and like, yeah, it's just, it's funny when you come back to it, it's almost more joyful. Like you just get so much more psyched and, and really appreciate that you could like go out when you're younger. Sometimes you're like trying to get sponsored or compare against people or that type of stuff. And when you're older, it's just more pure, I think. All right. Calvez Richard. Thank you for the $30 super chat. Really appreciate it. Um, time to get to work for me. Love what you do, who you are, easy to relate with. Not your mini ramp skills though. Uh, have a great day, evening, you all. Thank you, man. I really appreciate that. It means a lot. All right. I think my voice is starting to get a little raspy here. Got any guys, got any last questions? Moses Napier says, you're such a Chad. I've seen that comment before. Someone please explain to me what that means because I have no idea. I don't know if it's an insult, compliment. I have no idea. Um, what size hardware do you use? I never think about that. Um, I guess if I had a choice, maybe shorter. So when I changed my board, it didn't um, take as long. But that, that's really it. I'm thinking about going to the Netherlands, yeah. Um, this kid, I think Skateboard Bros from there, so I'd probably meet up with him, but... Um, yeah, I'm going to every country, so it, it's all in the plans. It's just a matter of when and when it makes the most sense. Um, let's see. Chad is like an alpha male. Oh, okay, so it was a compliment. Thank you. I For so long, I thought... Oh, wait, hold on, wait a minute. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. For, sometimes when people say it, though, it feels like it has a negative tone to it, so I'm not sure, but... I guess it makes sense. Um, let's see. Do you have a skate shop to recommend? Yes. Um, Bunger Saville. I lost my board, right? I lost my board on the airplane. I went in there to buy a complete. And he just hooked me up with everything. Got new trucks, new board. God. Yeah. New bearing. So shout out to Bunger's Table. Hold me down. That sucked. Chad is an incel culture, lol, not a great philosophy. I don't even know what this means. Uh, okay. What was COVID like in Mexico? Was it laid back? So, yeah, it was pretty laid back there. Um, it's not like here. I guess it's a little more, I don't know, impoverished maybe. So, like, I think that's the reason why people maybe care less or um, it seems like they care, but not the same way we do. But then again, I went to a restaurant and they had like these things. You had to step on. It was like almost sanitizer. And you get like showered by like spray sanitizer before you walk in. So, yeah, like they were they were caring. Um, but yeah, um, it's pretty, pretty uh, normal. I mean, it's just like New York, I'd say. I don't know where you're from, but. A constant dread is. Uh, they're uneducated is what it is. That's not very nice, man. Uh, and also, even if that is true, you know, your circumstances are different. So you shouldn't, uh, you know, people maybe not have, haven't had the same advantages that you've had. So try to be empathetic maybe to other people. Um, let's see. Let's see. Matt Neesman, what up? Used to skate with him back in the day all the time. What's going on? All right. Let's see. Love the Puerto Rico board in the background. I'm going. I'm going to Puerto Rico uh, Saturday. I'll be flying there. So that's the next stop. Even though it's not a country, I'm still going. A lot of you guys asked for it, so. 
Also, if you anyone knows anyone in Puerto Rico that wants to skate or show me around, see something cool, please send them my way on Instagram. Um, any advice on ankle care when you get older? I have a video I did with um, one of my friends who's a trainer. A couple of ankle exercises and things like that. But um, yeah, just I'd say look up ankle stretches and, and strengthen all the muscles around it. Eat healthy. You know, that's huge. Your body recovers a lot faster when it's healthy. You're not like smoking, drinking, stuff like that. So, um, let's see. Did you learn some Spanish while in Mexico? I was trying, man. It was a definitely humbling experience, like not knowing how to talk when I was over there. And, um, yeah, I was trying to use it as much as I could, but you know, I can get through a conversation, but not that smoothly. And if they start, you know, like real basic. Let's see. Kieran Clark says, love your content, Chad. The challenges you do are super inspiring. Any particular countries you're looking forward to hiring up? Um, I don't know what you mean by hiring up, like coming with a crew or just going to. Um, let's see. Riley's dad, Mike, must be really bored because he's been trying to troll me, but he's not. He doesn't realize that trolling doesn't work on me. Um, let's see. Hitting up. Oh, okay. Stupid. Oh, correct. Yeah. Uh, so I talked about it a little bit earlier. I'm going to be going to, after this Puerto Rico trip, maybe right after, depends when I can get a flight. I'm going to fly right to Central America, to um, Panama, and I'm going to hit like six, seven countries in a row back to back, hopefully, if I can hit the border, get through the borders and afford it and everything goes well. And then I'll fly home from Belize, probably like a month or two long trip. I'm going to buy a one-way ticket and see what happens. Do I use risers? Um, I've never used risers before. Might help, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, he said I wouldn't worry about the Chad thing. Yeah, it's funny. I always get all these like Chad references like from movies and things like that. Um Hmm. How do you get over the fear of trying new tricks? Um, I do everything systematic, right? I even have a video on it, like how to learn new tricks in skateboarding. Basically, I had a trick. This is what the video was. I had a trick that was like really hard for me. I wanted to do it forever, but I just couldn't attempt it. Like I was just so scared to try it. So I just worked my way up. Like I, you know, I'm just trying to do a trick over a spine. So I tried on a smaller spine, a safer one, started getting the motion down, kept practicing it. And then I got one, kind of like fling. And then when I went to the big one, I'd fling the board over the, like I wouldn't even try to land it. And then I kind of just like creep my way into getting close to it. So I don't just like usually try something if I don't feel that comfortable. I'll try to build that comfort and be like, okay, I know I got this now. So. That'll, like, prevent you from getting hurt. How is your luck so bad with losing things while traveling? I I don't know. This time, it wasn't my fault. <laughs> like, normally, I just leave things behind. Um, but, yeah. Um, this time, they just didn't send my bag when I sh switched flights. They must have put it on the wrong plane, and then they can't find it. Um, let's see. Also, appreciate all the super chats you guys sent in. Really helps. Helps me get through all the countries and everything. And, um, anyone new here? I just, uh, started the Patreon. It's, uh, Patreon slash Chad Caruso. And, yeah, we're just going to be doing trick tips over there now. A lot more in-depth, um, 
Going to be doing like behind the scenes of my travels to every country, raw footage and things like raw trying tricks. Um, what else? I'm going to poll you guys to see what tricks you want to learn and then I'll make tutorials on that. So if you guys support, it would really be a huge help. Help me get through all these uh, trips to every country. All right. Matt Dahlberg holding it down. There's the link right there to the Patreon. Um, let's see. Yo, Chad, any tips for an Ali Big Spin disaster? Landed one the other day, but it took hours. Um, seems like you're there already. Like, if you landed it, the next day you go back, it'll probably be much easier. And it's just going to keep doing that. So I think if you did it once, you'll probably get it. But if not, um, I have a tutorial for that trick on my YouTube channel. So, um, Have you broken some part of the body? Never, never, um, never skateboarding, at least, knock on wood. Just the, the knee injury, the torn ACL, PCL. And then once that healed, a BMXer crashed into me and tore my MCL in the same knee. So that's really my only skate injury. Matt Neesman asked, am I still filming and editing all on my phone? Everything, 100%, the whole operation from start to finish has been on my phone. Um... Yeah, partially I did it because I wanted to just show people that they could do it themselves too. And then partially because I just think it's more convenient. Like sometimes it can be annoying, maybe looking at a small phone, but it's just so easy, so convenient. And I could capture these moments that sometimes you can't capture with a big camera. Like, you know, and those are the moments that intrigue me the most, like these real interactions with people where they might not even know you're filming. That to me is like the thing I want to capture and share. So sometimes that's harder. And then traveling, um, it's easy just with a phone. It's in my pocket, you know, and maybe a tripod, but I don't need all this gear. I could daily vlog and not have to transfer the footage. So everything just kind of makes sense for me. Obviously, you sacrifice a little bit of the quality, but I think it's cool. Um, I use iMovie straight up, like nothing fancy. That's it. Just iMovie. Um, how is your wheel company going? Is it working out for you? Yeah, it's good. Been selling wheels and it's been hard to get new wheels because of COVID, but, um, I have a new shirt coming out in right when I get back from Puerto Rico, probably like a week or two. This graphic is incredible. I was like laughing nonstop when I came up with it. It was just like the perfect idea. So can't wait to share it with you guys. It'll be up on Karma Wheel Co. I'll share it on all my so social media, but it should be on the Karma website. Um, what is it called? I can't tell you the name because it kind of it kind of gives away what the shirt is, but yeah, um, it'll be out soon. It'll be out soon enough. Oh, the name of the wheel company. It's Karma Wheel Co. Is YouTube your full-time job now or do you have a side job? Great content, by the way. Thank you, Joseph. Appreciate that. Um, YouTube's like not even close to my job. Like I make almost nothing, like a little bit, maybe enough to like go out to eat a couple nights a week or something like that. Like it's not that much. Um, I'm trying to, and that's what the Patreon thing is that I just created. It's like an attempt to help you guys and then help me get to every country, like help both of us. So, but yeah, other than that, I'm still like just working a regular do job, just work on the taco truck and grind it out as a server. Um, please give us a clue for the graphic. Oh, man. Um, let me see. I can't. Uh, let me see. It has to do with sobriety. It has to do with uh, sobriety, but not exactly. Like the shirt itself has nothing to do with sobriety, but you'll think about it in that way when you look at the shirt. 
Um, yeah, that's, that's all I got to say, though. It's, it's, honestly, it's too perfect. <laughs> I can't wait for you guys to see it. Yeah. Um, great community, man. Little channel. Gonna grow healthy and big love the videos, man. Appreciate it. Thanks, man. Yeah, that was my thing. I never, like wanted to do these shallow kind of empty things or grab for like try to get views and stuff i'd rather grow slow and like just have good people that are interested in what i'm doing as opposed to just having like a number to show off with or something um probably could be a little bit better with that and like trying to have more exposure but i just would rather have like the peace of mind and the mental like health and feeling good about everything than than like views or something you know so um, let's see. I answered this before, but, um, said nine club should hit you up so you could be a guest on their podcast. Um, yeah, I think they, they stick with more like core skateboarders, right? So, um, when I did my 50 States challenge, my friend actually reached out to them and I don't think they got back. So I'd get the vibe that. They're just only really like these top pro skaters and like that's it. So maybe down the road they'll switch it up. But uh, yeah. How do you skate in the cold? I'm in Maine and on the days when it's not snowing, it's way too cold. You should know, man. You're used to the cold. You just put on a... Uh, I don't even bundle up too much. I'll just start with like a t-shirt. No, a thermal, a t-shirt, a hoodie, maybe a jacket. And then I'll just try a trick when I start nonstop to try to get warm and get going. And then after that, I'm, I'm pretty good. What music are you into? Um, right now, I've just been listening to the Growlers, like nonstop. Um, yeah, the Growlers. Let's see. Father John Misty, I like a lot. Um, I like, uh, like songs with good lyrics, kind of like rock stuff like that but uh, i listen to anything I enjoy whatever made iron maiden for sure iron maiden's like the ultimate skate music you're going to skate a bowl gotta have maiden on get you pumped to try anything <laughs> um let's see feeble-minded podcast come back anytime it might might come back um I had to stop it because my, my dad got a little sick. He's got Parkinson's, so I've just been spending more time, like, taking care of him and being there and stuff like that. And, you know, it's a lot, like, running a YouTube channel alone and then filming a podcast alone and editing the audio, uploading it, the promo, the, the clips. It's like, you know, it was, like, just way too much. And I, I don't like feeling like... Um, yeah, just like that, like flustered for no reason. So, um, yeah, just been hanging out with my dad a little bit more. But, yeah, maybe in the future. We'll see. Maybe when I'm traveling, I'll interview someone, like on the road, or we'll see. Um, that's a good question. Um, let's see. What's the most important part? starting a company rooted in skate culture hmm basically the, the most important part to me of any company is to have a good motive like a good reason that you're doing it if you have like a shallow motive that's what you're going to get back and that, that's what your life's going to be like that's what you're going to see you know i like to try to do things that can help people more and they're like beneficial and they're not for like these selfish reasons. So if you can find a reason that you can get behind that it'll help people, then that's a good reason to do anything. Um, let's see. All right. Um, Appreciate that about my dad. Thank you. He's tough, man. He's a trooper, so he'll be all right. Um, let's see. What 
what was your reason? Well, Karma, I mean, for Karma Wheel Co., my reason is to promote just basically what the YouTube channel is about. Just, like, getting back out and skating and, like, not caring about the bullshit and just enjoying skateboarding and, and uh, being healthy. You know, not living up to the standards of other people, the community, and, like, what was expected in skateboarding, you know, and, like, to be a badass or treat people like a shitty way. You don't have to do any of that, you know. So that was, like, my reason I want to promote kind of that, so. Um, let's see. All right, I think my voice is getting a little raspy. Let me see. How did you manage to get so many subscribers and did it take you a long time to get where you are now? Um, let's see. I think it's been like four years of just nonstop, a video a week at least. You know, sometimes I went daily, 30 days in a row, 50 something days in a row. Um, a lot of tutorials, you know, I put in a lot, a lot of time into it and it still feels kind of small to be honest with you. It doesn't feel like too big to me for how long and how much work I put into it. But, um, I try not to focus on that stuff, like the money or the numbers, just like do what I love to do and help as many people as I can and focus on that and just feel good, as good as I can every day and like. Try not to sweat all that other stuff. I feel like it'll work if I just keep doing that. Um, let's see. Are there any life lessons you learned from skateboarding? I would say that you can do anything, right? That skill that you learn from like learning hard tricks over and over, that applies to life just like... You know, that was how I was able to start a business. In the past, I would have never been able to do that. But all the little steps and failures that you have to face, you overcome that with skateboarding and you build up that muscle. So it kind of makes it easy to, you know, deal with problems. Also, you're dealing with problems in a high stress scenario where you could get hurt. You know, you could slip and fall. So you're like mastering this. So it makes you, I feel more calmer in life. Like you're not as like maybe shocked by things or, you know, I don't know. Builds up like an immunity. Um, have you ever met Billy Perry? Yeah. Uh, he comes into the restaurant I work at Swell Taco, him and, uh, Anthony Panza, two BMXers. And, um, yeah, I see him at the skate park occasionally too. All right, guys, looking like it might end it soon. Last couple of questions here because my voice is getting kind of raspy. Also, thanks to everyone holding me down with the super chats. Appreciate it. Going towards the travel fund. Um, let me see. Let's see. Have you made some new friends on the road outside of a park uh, that, that you're still in touch? Um, what do you mean outside of a park? Like not skating or I'm not sure what you mean. But yeah, I mean, I met so many people on this trip, people I'm still in contact with. Um, yeah, I mean, that was like, that was the best part of the trip. And that's what made me want to go to every single country is just to see what skating's like over there and meet the people and hear their stories and like why they skate, stuff like that. So I'm excited, that, honestly, not even like the warm places. I want to go to like some places where like, you know, people are struggling and see how skateboarding helps them, you know. So I'm excited, excited to go everywhere. Um, non-skating. There was a lot of people I talked to non-skating. I just can't, yeah, I can't come up with something off the top of my head, but there was a lot of people. They were in my videos and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, let's see. Let 
Let's see. All right, this might be the last one here. Um, what do we got? All right, playing any video games. Um, I did when I was younger, but yeah, now no video games. I try to X out all those types of things that get in the way of like this and what I want to do. So quit smoking, quit drinking, quit caffeine, just to channel all that time, energy, and money towards what I love to do. Um, video games, same thing. You know, I'm not saying they're bad, but if you were trying to make a living off of it, then that's cool. Do that. But if you're just doing it to pass the time or like avoid something, I would say go for what like you really want to do and, and put your time and energy to that. So yeah, no video games for me. And what's that hour and a, no, hour and 40. Damn. Show us your setup. All right. I'm going to show you my setup and then I think that's it for the stream. So right now I've got this, uh, Chapman. It's a brand new board because I got uh, lost when I was flying home from Mexico. I lost all my stuff. So got a 8.5 Chapman skateboard right here. We got some Jessup grip. I don't like it. Um, too grippy. So I stick with the Jessup instead of mild. These Indies are 149s. And white, this will be the whitest board I ever skated. I'm going to try to skate a little bit more vert, try to learn backside airs on tranny. So I want to widen up and see how it felt. So I'm going to try that on the Puerto Rico trip. 54 millimeter wheels from my company, Karma Wheel Co. You guys check those out. Reds, cheap, get the job done. And, uh... Yeah, just any any old bolts really. I think these are the shorter ones, but I'll use anything. All right. <laughs> Classic Chad loses all his things at the airport. This time it wasn't my fault, I swear. I transferred flights and they didn't move my skateboard and my bag onto the flight. So all my wardrobe, which is eight black pairs of Dickies pants, and eight t-shirts, all gone. Both tripods gone. Um, GoPro in there, gone. So I got to buy all that stuff. And uh, even the bag was like $200. So everything's gone. I had to re-up for this trip coming. So that sucked. All right. All right. Cool. All right, I think that's it, guys. Thank you for everyone for hanging out. I had a blast answering your questions. I feel like I got to know you guys a little bit better too. So uh, I might do this again. I'm definitely going to be doing it on the Patreon. Maybe a couple of times a month. Like only on Patreon. Or maybe I'm definitely doing trick tips where I'll teach you like right at the ramp. You know, so I can answer any questions you have about any tricks. So yeah, that'll be on Patreon. And that's just patreon.com slash Chad Caruso. And then, yeah, that's it. Uh, yeah, thanks for uh, hanging out, guys. I'll see you soon.